And that was a cool elevator sequence. And hooray for ROM glitches, which I can't fix. Seriously, I don't know how why that's happening. That never happened. That never happened when I was practicing this level. So with that aside, we have this guy, Mr. Fit. He shows up quite a bit in Nuts and Bolts, but we'll get to that when we actually see him in Nuts and Bolts. So yeah, he's like up to up to. And pretty much, yeah, he has a series of three challenges um, throughout the level, and he'll basically give you a jiggy. And all three of them are very easy. And I'll get to them when I um, get to that point. So, the way to get around this level is through these, uh, like, yeah, Porta flowers, really. And pretty much here are some, yeah, the drill liner things, I guess, we can break. There's that. Uh, this is one of those seeds we need for the level, since there are two seeds we get in this level, and both of them are used to access other areas. And, well, you know, there's Mumble Skull there already. We're making good progress, folks. Come on, get in there, please. Okay. And those are the, uh, jumping shoes, the fast shoes things. I'll get to those later, but... First off, here is easiest honeycomb piece in the game, I swear. And if you can't tell what I'm doing, I'm basically taking the fast shoes through the pot so I can basically jump over that and pretty much cheat since that's all we're doing in this game, just cheating. Hooray for cheating! And hooray for more ROM glitches, which I can't fix. Really, I'm not going to mention it too much, since there's nothing I can do about it. If it happens, it happens. And pretty much, he's going to go to some other area. And how did he get there so fast? That's my question. And shifting the camera around, so hopefully that won't happen again. Also, down there is a Jello castle. Um, up there is a block of cheese. Awesome. That's the reason this level is awesome. A hunk of cheese. Not cheese from Foster Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, just regular cheese. So there's bees here, just like, um, just like Click Clock Wood from Banjo-Kazooie. Oh yeah, this level does have some Banjo-Kazooie references, like, um, I'll get into that a bit. So, more glitches, but ignoring that completely. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I'm using it. I was trying to aim a clockwork egg there, but that stupid thing interrupted me. So here is a little tunnel-like thing that has a safe number combination on it. And that number pretty much represents the a safe combination, which I have not shown off yet. I have not shown the guy we're supposed to talk to for that. I'll get to him eventually, I think. But he's not important at all. Basically, for those, you have to... Um, yeah, you need to get the four combinations, and... For some reason, there's no sun glitch this time. I don't know what's happening. I guess, I guess it's random. So, this is George Ice Cube. He's the wife... He's the wife, uh... He's the husband of Mildred Ice Cube from Hailfire Peaks. And pretty much, we're gonna do the same thing to him like we did with Mildred as you'll see in a couple seconds. MURDER! <laughs> oh, I kind of spoiled it, whatever. So there's... either an entrance to Pterodactyl Land or Hailfire Peaks. The Hailfire Peaks one's obvious. No! I'm a murderer! I murdered people twice! <laughs> I killed two ice cubes, but yeah. We're pretty much murderers. Sorry, Mil um, dude. Take one for the team, I guess. So that pretty much cools down the water over there. And let's see. As soon as you get on a fly pad, these flower things will try to attack you. Uh, let's see. Over there, next to Wumba, is a terrible person and must die. And should never exist, ever. 
And yes, it's the same woman I've mentioned countless times before. Uh, it's Canary Mary from Glitter Gulch Mine. Basically, we're doing the exact same thing we did before. We're doing races, which I really don't want to do. And guess what? I'm not actually going to do it yet, since I'm saving that for one of the last jiggies I'm going to collect. So instead, I'll go to Wumba's place, since I don't have the patience for that yet. And that, and I plan on post-commentating the Canary Mary stuff. And personally, I don't find it as bad as the other ones. And now that I said that, I don't find it as bad as some people think it is, but now that I said that, I'm probably gonna regret it and have a million outtakes. So there is that. Hidden ginger over there. Uh, not gonna use the transformation yet since I have no use for it. And hooray for some. I swear, I have to fix that glitch eventually. I don't know what causes it and why it happens, but whatever. Uh, apparently it's better now. And why is it working there? I don't get it. Whatever. And no, I'm not going to go into the stupid mine card because I don't want to do Canary Mary yet. Instead, we'll head to that trash can, but not really, since... I don't know if this one leads to the trash can, does it? And I swear, these cutscenes take forever to process. I don't like this. It's really weird. Uh, and also, I guess that's supposed to be jello or mud. I don't know. I don't really see the difference, but whatever. And there's a bee, or a wasp. Ugh. Same enemies from Banjo-Kazooie, basically. Just as annoying. With that, um... Notes. Pretty much the rest of the notes in this level are in this area here. A lot of the notes actually are there. So, for, before that, there's a, a Jam Jars move we can only access with Banjo, which is hidden by Jello. Oh no, Jello. And also, you got these little enemies that pop out of nowhere. They're really weird. They're flat flower things. Or they also have sausages or candy canes, like that one. And this, this, this is the safe I was talking about before. I figured I should show off this guy's dialogue, since we basically have to figure out the combination. And for some reason, the ROM's telling me I don't have any combinations, even though I already clearly hit the button with the one, but whatever. And this guy's pretty much being an, a moron and purposely forgetting her password just to make us work. And all four numbers we have to use a little, um, clockwork egg for. And these enemies are really weird, and I swear, they're, they're just like this in the actual game, too. They're so weird. And they're really annoying, but not as annoying as the fire imps from the Hailfire Peaks. No, not as annoying. Uh, also, uh, this part of this song also plays in the Banjo Land theme from Nuts and Bolts. And here I pretty much die. I swear, this game hates me. Or at least those enemies do. Now, if I would have had the honeycomb refill cheat on, I'd be doing really good here. And pretty much I'm back to this entrance I hate so much. And I'll be going all the way back to the cave. Exciting. Also, um... The cutscene there also gets trimmed after you do it the first time, which is convenient. But why couldn't they do that for the other ones? Seriously. We only need to see the cutscene once. And pretty much, look at all those notes. I gotta get those quickly. Da bop bop bop. Also, I can finally hear game audio while I'm narrate while I'm post commentating these, thankfully, so. Now I guess it won't overlap, assuming I'm doing it right. <gasps> Am I doing this right? Okay, never mind. So, weird enemies again. I, hope, I don't know, I don't even know what they're called. I could look it up on Banjo Wiki, but I'm lazy. And I only got a minute left. So, notes there, and Banjo because we stop pads. And Warpad. Also, uh, take note, there are only two Warpads in this level. This one and the entrance, so, yeah. Switching to Kazooie here to hatch this egg, which can only be used by Banjo, which I'll get into the next segment. 
and this is pretty much one of those funky looking butterfly stuff. They are really weird. Float is float on things for Banjo. So I'll see you folks next time.